Tim's the cinematographer. This is my IRL brother-in-law, David Miner. Hi. True story, David has been vlogging for like 11 years and is the one that got me into the idea of vlogging. You're like my, my vlog father. <laughs> but you're so old. <laughs> <laughs> we had this conversation, you came down and visited, mm -hmm. so this would be like 10 or 11 years ago, uh, and the four of us went out to some jazz bar. But that's the first time that I remember that you and I had this conversation about the similarities between the creative process in music and the creative process in science. Scientist, musician. Yeah, we've been having this conversation like sort of repeatedly. Or, or, or different variations on this conversation, which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the creative process, no matter what field you're in, is the same. It is. I think that's right. You know, it's, uh, I, I, I made a video on this, uh, I don't know, eight months ago. I find a lot of inspiration from skateboarding. I don't myself skateboard. Like, I can roll around on a skateboard and not fall, but I'm not a skater. But I find a lot of inspiration from skaters because the way that they look at creativity is at its, hmm. at such a, I don't know, small level hmm. that, that you can really grasp onto what they're trying to do with the different pieces to then progress the art. So I, I look at skateboarding quite a bit and there's a skateboarder a pro skater um, whose name is Rodney Mullen and he does a couple of TEDx talks mm -hmm. where he talks about these things he distills down creativity into your sets of tools that you you know, develop in varying ways that then you take those tools and, and by tools I mean ideas building blocks processes all the history all the culture before it other ideas from other things and then you can create fusions within different um, disciplines. Mm. You take all of those things and then you start rearranging them in different ways. And as you begin to rearrange those in different ways, you can potentially get to someplace new. A misconception is that scientists are so analytical, so like calculated that things are just programmatic and planned out. And that, that's true to an extent. There are things that are that's the core. Out, that's the core of creativity, though. Yeah. Creativity is putting in the work. It's learning all of the things, putting those in together in different ways. Maybe a lot of those has been have been put together mm -hmm. in different mm -hmm. ways, looking for new avenues to then fuse and create something new. I think of scientists, science, as astronomy, as being super creative. That, like, when I'm doing good science, I'm coming up with new ideas, I'm coming up with plays on existing ideas, I'm reading things that have been forgotten or are being rediscovered. Like it's it's every bit like like the creative habit uh, for dancing or for painting or for music. You have this history, hundreds of years of history that go into the topic. Um, you have your, your practice of how you actually accomplish the things that you do, that you create, that you make. Um, but the other part that took me a long time to realize is that being a good creative person where you're coming up with new ideas and you have synthesis on the fly, that creativity only happens when you are practiced in creating. Mm -hmm. When you practice the creative habit of just getting up and making things. 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 of my days are not that creative. They are, they're just rote. Uh, it's getting up and putting in the work every day so that that one day out of a thousand where yeah. the thing happens, it becomes my next big idea or my next big direction, that you're ready for it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Musicians do a really bad job of that. Musicians often think that creativity is just purely making something new. Mm. You often think you're not creative enough. That's a value judgment. Students I see who feel like they're not creative or like, oh, how I have creative new ideas. You know, the thing they're doing wrong isn't, it's not that you're not coming up with new ideas or, or good enough new ideas. It's just, you, you just need to create more. You just need to create more and then be patient. You're you just not, need to be patient. You're not putting in your time, period. Yeah, you just gotta create and be patient. How's Make, our shot looking? Are we over? Uh, uh, the sun is terrible. You don't look <laughs> at like a, a professional football player mm. at, at the height of their game mm -hmm. and 
say, oh, that, you know, that person, you know, that didn't should... put in their time. Yeah. They they woke up one day and they were like that. Right. They just get out of bed and they score those points. Yeah. Right. It's, it's the word talent. Talent yeah. is such an incredibly loaded word. It's like, oh, man, that person is so talented. What that means is that person <laughs> put in so much work beforehand. Putting in the work and having the opportunity to put in the work. Yes. And that's, that's one that I struggle with, like, how can I make these opportunities for people? I don't have a good answer for that. What got you into vlogging? Why did you start making videos for YouTube? Two years ago? Yeah, two years ago. Casey Neistat. Yeah? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I just watched so many of his, from that huge chunk of mm -hmm. whatever, 400 vlogs, I don't even know how many, but and how did. passionate he was, and, and he had drive, and he was telling a really interesting mm -hmm. story every day. Um, and he had a lot of fun. I think, mm. I think that was, you know, there was just a lot of things about it and it wasn't fun, silly fun. It was she just had a lot of fun. And I think a lot of us that do particularly, uh, are in particularly creative disciplines. Uh, we look for that kind of thing, you mm -hmm. know, look at people who still have fun at their jobs. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. That was a huge part of it. I just thought it looked really fun, and I, you know, I like making stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think something for me. I mean, I've been just searching for an audience, or searching for something, or someone, or somehow to make things for. You know, that's the thing we miss sometimes. Is like uh, people put their heart and soul into something. Yeah. You know, yeah. they take the time. Go we were talking about creative, time creative earlier, life, yeah. and it's like, man, this person put the time and effort into that. We don't celebrate that. Mm -hmm. We judge it for not being real, and that's just mm. so brutal to me. What do I have? I have 12 notes, you know? Right, right. I have 12 major keys, and I have 12 minor keys. I mean, all, you all know, if I'm going to take it a little bit further, I have, like, what, 36 different types of scales that I could use to create chords? All, all we have is light. And if you can't figure out how to look at it or what wavelength to look at it or what time to look at it, like all you get, you get four properties of light. The intensity and wavelength, you get the polarization, so the angle at which the photon comes out. That's why your polarizing sunglasses mm -hmm. work when you do this and not like that or whatever. Mm. And direction, that's it. That's all you can know and time, right? When you look at it. Okay. And yet we have, for every one of those things, we have different ways of quantifying them, different like lingo, different uh, units, different notation. Like we confuse ourselves and make it very hard to talk between sub, we call sub-disciplines. We're all astronomers, but it's very hard for the astronomers who work even a little bit outside of sub-disciplines to work together. Part of it is a failure of imagination. Part of it is that people, they just get very focused, like this is my thing. I couldn't possibly publish outside of my subdiscipline because I'm just barely keeping it together here. Well, is that part of the, is that part of the uh, um, culture of astronomy? I think so, I think, I mean, I think, I think that's science. I think that's the culture of science. Sure. But yeah, people feel like, you know, I'm barely keeping it together where I am publishing. How could I possibly publish in a different area? And then part of it, it just literally is, it's difficult. Some of this goes back to, you know, the thing that you were talking about when you have students and well, Maybe sometimes I'm just supposed to, you know, teach them kind of the day-to-day -day things. Mm. You know, some of that stuff is is day-to-day -day. insecurity. Yeah, period. right, right. Which I think is such a that's such a giant thing in the artistic community. It's a huge thing in science. It, I, it just it seems to me that a lot of a lot of the things that we're talking about are insecurities on some level. It's something that as a mentor. I want to work so hard on because yeah. a lot of that insecurity you can't fix it you can't just like I can't just be like let me let me mentor you out of that yeah but you can help you're talking about a lot of things you do when you take in your interns you know is is like helping them build the skills but I think a big part of it is also having that mentor who's just gonna who's just gonna applaud you when you're trying well that's what I'm saying about the that we were talking about with yeah. the work earlier yeah. right right where like just put in the work. We, why? And then let's let's just be like excited when people are putting that work in. Right. Let's look at age. Yeah. Let's look at age for a minute. We're old. Is that what you're gonna say? We're definitely old. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you're you're right in the middle of your, you know, like if you don't if you don't do it in the next six years, <laughs> if you don't do it in the next six years, you know, I mean, it's it's whatever. And uh, I'm ancient. <laughs> 
I'm ancient. I'm three years older than him, but that's fine. <laughs> like, in my field, I'm, I'm right, ancient. Right. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, though. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, that's right. You know I, I, mean? I have a couple more years left before I get put out to the academic pastor. Yeah. <laughs> but you're already there. Yeah, that's, oh yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah.